do have the Gurkha spirit, they'll fight hard. Could be an interesting night ahead. Power, not quite ready. They were in the huddle. Now we're underway. Australia getting the ball rolling, a first ever meeting between Australia and Nepal. And perhaps fitting to say that the country that is home to Everest has a rather large mountain to climb tonight, Andy Harper. Yes, yeah, Simon, nice to get that one out and early. Had to. Had to. <laughs> this is going to be a night for mountain range analogies. But it's a great night for Australia hosting Nepal. Um, first time in our code, in our sport. I can't think of many other times when Australia's played Nepal on anything, really. So, uh, terrific night here in the nation's capital. Big night for the Socceroos. Always is when there's World Cup points for which to play. And this team which bounced back Nepal from a 7-0 hiding to Q8 match day one to win against the Chinese Taipei. Hey! Might give them some measure of confidence coming into this match tonight. Well, passes like that from Ryan Grant held, turning the ball over rather cheaply. As you saw from our little caption just a few moments ago, we got Kevin Musket with us in co-commentary as well. Tonight could be a chance here for Australia of oh, Kieran Jemjong got it all horribly wrong and it rebounded back off Jamie McLaren and it was very close to the opening goal in the most embarrassing of circumstances for the Nepal custodian maybe a good chance to bring Kevin Musket in for the first time good evening Muskie thanks Simon how are you very good and that was very nearly an own goal I thought it came off McLaren but in fact it was off the uh, Nepali defender Devendra Tamang Looking forward to hearing your insights tonight in a technical and tactical sense, Muskie. Fresh from the coaching ranks with Melbourne Victory, this is a different sort of pressure for you. He's saying nothing, Harps. Always keep his powder And always a man to keep his cancer. As you can hear already, lots of noise in favour of Nepal. 100,000 of Nepalese heritage here in Australia, 50,000 of them in Western Sydney. They have their own football association in that part of Australia's biggest city. 25 clubs and some wonderful names, Harps. The Himalayan Yaks and the Gurkha Spurs. Wonderful. Let's see what Aziz Bayic can do here. It's just going to run away from him. That well made, made it nicely. You know, Simon, the recent history going back decades now that sort of recent history about Australia is all about you know the ethnic communities as we see Mark Milligan dropping the ball beautifully over the top for as is Bayich and principally those ethnic communities have been out of Europe and the more modern ethnic communities we don't tend to talk about so much the African uh, communities coming through the Chinese Association as you quite rightly point out the, the Southern Asians represented tonight by Nepal. This is, these are great emerging stories in Australian sport. Ryan Grant's had uh, a tricky opening, giving the ball away once and then fell flat on his backside. Sydney FC right fullback who's played in every minute for his country since making his debut against Jordan as that injury replacement for Josh Risden at the Asian Cup back in January. He's made the spot his own. Well, you have to, just looking at the way Nepal are lining up here, Simon, they're holding a reasonably high line. There would have been some expectation from people coming to the ground or tuning in on television tonight that they'd just drop deep from the start and absorb pressure, not allow any space in behind for Australia to exploit. And so, in some senses, given the disparity and the weight division between the two, it's a reasonably bold approach. Perhaps they've learned from watching Kuwait in the last international year. Probably in the first 45 gave Australia a little bit too much respect. And by the time they brought their two stars on at half time, the game had already gone. Aaron Moy, who's played in Ryan Grant there, was one of the goal scorers. His first at international level in three and a half years. Harry Souter getting some early touches on his international debut. Graham Arnold's a big rap on him. Well, I, I, you had to feel for the visitors tonight because as they did the pre-match obligatory shaking of the hands. Just watch how this develops with Matt Lecky on the right. Uh, three in the box, he might not need any of them. Still with Lecky and Jordan Irvine, Jackson Irvine I should say, with the shot and it's ricocheting around like pinball in the penalty area. Craig Goodwin trying to get a piece of it. And somehow Nepal survive that little flurry. That's more by luck than judgment, but they've turned it over again. 
That's going to be a free kick for the foul on Bayage. Well, this will be the first test from a set piece, which is going to be bread and buddy, I'd imagine, for Harry Suter. But beautiful work from Matthew Leckie. Lovely turn, such so sharp to get through once and then twice, leaving Tamang in his wake. And then the ball ricocheting. It's not been a really comfortable start from keeper Kiran, the captain of the team. A couple of fumbles. Australia couldn't profit. It really should have been cleaned up by the goalkeeper and all the pressure should have gone. And the pressure is still very much alive for Nepal and Harry Suter shaping as a towering presence. Looking to get on the end of Moyes' free kick. He goes along the ground. Craig Goodwin drives it low. It's in now. Jamie McLaren. It's taken a touch over five minutes. And the Melbourne City striker has just his second international goal. And Nepal's resistance has been broken early. Well, a good variation from Australia. Everyone's expecting the ball to go to 23, Harry Suda. But they go short, Goodwin fires it in. Another ricochet, the third already. This time the soccer is profit. Keeper again languishing on the near post. Unfortunate for him, great for Jamie McLaren. Well, as they did in Q8, they've got the early goal, Kevin Musket. Yeah, and much to uh, McLaren, Jamie's form in, in the, the pre-season with his club side. Could uh, be in again here, sorry Muskie, it's Jamie McLaren again. This one is uh, charged out, top of the box, Goodwin with the cross, this could be a long night for Nepal, Kevin. Yeah, and as I was saying, Simon, he's, uh, you know, a big part of Jamie's game, he's picking up those uh, positions in the box, and that one there, obviously off a set piece, but uh, for him to be able to first, uh, to be the first to react, uh, gets him uh, a tap in and, a, and an easy goal, but, uh, you know, those easy goals add up to your building your tally throughout the season. He's a real poacher, isn't he? He scored six already in this year's FFA Cup, and he was the Johnny on the spot for the rebound of Kiran Chemjong. So a great start for Graham Arnold's team. And they are, as expected, dominating this match already. That's a little bit of awry, though, from Milligan. A bit of relief for Nepal. Yeah, and all the expectation from that first set piece was that Harry Suda was going to be the target standing over two metres. And you had to feel for Nepal players in the, as I was saying, the obligatory pre-game shaking of the hands. They must have thought they were queuing up to be extras in an episode of The Adams Family. I mean, they would have craned their neck trying to find the top of Mount Suter. We found a new nickname for him already, Harps. He's running off your lead, Simon, yeah, as usual. Here he is, the big man from Fleetwood Town, where he's on loan from Stoke City. Plays under a certain Jerry Barton, of course, for Fleetwood. Andy Wright, perhaps a little bit rusty, he's not played uh, an awful lot of football, in fact that's an understatement at club level for Bristol City. Just 72 minutes all season, he's been suffering with an injury. And those 72 minutes came back in August against Birmingham City. This is Lecky, who's been bu busy early on, and he's jinked his way past Ranjit, the Napoli's left back, and referee Al Kateri will bring them back for a free kick. Such a feature of Matt Leckie's game as a soccerer when he plays further up the field than he does in the Bundesliga, starting in a wide position. And he drifts into that inside right channel, picks the ball up, turns and faces the defender or the line of defence. And defenders don't know whether to go with him or sit. Invariably, they don't. He picks the ball up, can turn and run at them and causes a lot of trouble from that position. Is this going to be the in-swinger from Goodwin or the out-swinger from Moy? It's the former. And Suter was waiting. It's off the bar, off the post, I should say. From Jackson Irvine, who's been close to a couple of goals already. We've not even played 10 minutes. Oh, another ricochet as well. It's like, it is literally like a pinball machine in there. And just to Kevin Musket's point, again, Muskie, Jamie McLaren, uncanny positioning. Just can't quite get on top of that one. And, and with uh, with Jamie as well, true, you know, normally uh, if teams are higher, he loves it when teams are a little bit higher because he's got the pace and, and he's also got the he makes great runs to get in behind people and use his speed. But when you're playing against uh, such opposition where there are a lot of people uh, as as Nepal are uh, tonight, it's those instances where he's really going to get his uh, his touches and his goals and his strikes on goal. That was a good touch by Sujal Shrestha. He's done well to win it back briefly. 
And he's scrapping with it. With uh, Aaron Moy. Ryan Grant does clear. With Abhishek Rizal. And he's then unceremoniously brought to ground by Ranjit. Just a little bit too quick for the left fullback. Here's Australia's left fullback, as is Bage. He's uh, struggling for game time himself for this club team in Turkey. Perhaps no surprise, Harps. His competition for the left back berth is Gail Clichy. Tough. That, that, that does make things a little bit difficult. That's a cheap turnover by the aforementioned, as is Bage. Michel Rias handed the ball straight back to Australia. He gets away with that, maybe for now. I sort of hope that the referee gets him in a stoppage of play because it's just a blatant denial of an attacking opportunity. And there's enough of the least fans here. I'm not going to get a lot to shout about tonight. That would have been one such moment. This is Mark Milligan. He already seems to be embroiled in a relegation battle with uh, his new club, Southend United, in the English third tier. Grant short for Lecky. Moy. Strongly stringing the passes together at will. This will be no surprise either to Graham Arnold or to Johan Carly. Milligan. They're just trying to probe and find the gaps in this rather deep set defense at the moment. Hey, 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 hey. Bailey Wright. Courage forward by the lack of pressure on the ball. Jackson Irvine did well to ride that challenge from Bichel Rai. Bayic slips on the greasy top. Not the first player to do that tonight. Ryan Grant's done it as well. And now a chance for Nepal to break forward. And Jan Vista, their two goal hero. But Bailey Wright's too strong for him, illegally so though, in the opinion of the referee, who was well placed, Andy. Yeah, a little bit sloppy from the Socceroos. Um, I don't know that the passing's quite um, the way it needs to be for momentum purposes, Kevin. The passes are going straight to feed instead of inviting teammates to attack space. And uh, picking up what you said earlier, Harps, and just watching Nepal, uh, you know, they weren't as deep as maybe anticipated prior to the game. Uh, they seem to uh, have a, a back four that's, you know, re middle of the half uh, of their own defensive uh, half and having a lot of bodies trying to outnumber the Australians with, uh, you know, five players in midfield. And when they were uh, early on prior to the goal, uh, cutting out those passes, they had the extra man or two in that area to keep possession of the ball. Well, this is risky. Almost turned over by Dines. So credit to them, they try to play out from the back. Nepal trying to play their football. And now they've coughed up a free kick. Scored by Milligan. ball by Australia, which uh, perhaps gives us the chance to bring in Robbie Slater, who's got the pitch side view tonight. What's your early take, Robbie? Yeah, good stuff from the soccer. Graham Arnold's off his bench uh, <laughs> quite a few times already. He wants the players, you can hear him, he's moved the ball quicker, moved the ball quicker, and he wants Lecky to particularly tuck inside and open that space for Ryan Grant to get down. And you see him going really high and wide early when the soccer is getting possession. But, yeah, look, I think he's reasonably happy, but you know, he's up and he wants him to move that ball quicker and try and get it into that front line as quick as possible. Goodwin's trying to do that. Lackey top of the box. Here's Moy. No way through on the first occasion. And a bit of breathing space for Nepal. Yeah, they'll grow into the game, the Socceroos. Just a couple of little sloppy moments. And, of course, they're going to be a little bit apprehensive in these early stages, despite their dominance, not to get hit on the counter-attack. And even some of... Um, Graham Arnold's uh, instructions to his players about repositioning, calling Aziz Bayic to drop a little bit deeper when they're in possession is, is part of that mentality of just make sure we don't get embarrassed, get 
put back on our heels because of an error and a breakaway effort on our goal. That was the closest that uh, Matty Ryan has come to being involved in the action. He's got a clear sight of the ball. Could be a quiet night for the Brighton and Hove Albion goalkeeper. They kept a clean sheet and uh, their latest win over Tottenham in the English Premier League. Big win that for the Seagulls. Here's Ananta Tarmang. He can't pick out a teammate. Bayic. Through Milligan. And right. Driven backwards by Sujal Shrestha. Moy, Bayic hugging the touchline. Goodwin has drifted infield. Moy, plenty in the box for Australia. If they can find the angle. Oh, it's beautifully played by Goodwin. They have the run of Moy. And the pile can't clear their lines. More pressure looming. Lofted into the box by Irvine. Cushion header by Grant. Brought down by McLaren. Set up again through right. Grant to try and hit the byline. And it's a corner off Ranjit. Oh, well done by Ranjit because Ryan Grant's effort to open his body, let the ball roll across. And so that he could face forward gave him that half yard right on the edge of the box. And he very often capitalises on those little bits of space to hit in a telling delivery. But uh, Ranjit did very well. The number 21 for Nepal. Here he is again, Harry Suter. Let's see if Natal has planned for the big man from Fleetwood Town. Goodwin's delivery. Suter's up there. He'll get another corner for his troubles. Well, they crowded them out nicely. It's an extraordinarily difficult defensive assignment. Let's make no bones about it. Goodwin swinging the ball in. It's got dangerous curl on it. And well, they're not going to be able to match him for elevation, so just crowd him out, see if he can block his run to the ball. Goodwin's come short. Moy, the conventional delivery. Good fist away this time by Kieran Chemjong, who's had a tricky opening quarter of an hour. That's to say the very least. Irvine. Two assists against Q8. Jackson Irvine. Two good chances to score himself in the early stages tonight. A roar of approval as the target over halfway. The shape of Ravi Paswan. And what the Socceroos have succeeded in doing so far is, which is not to be unexpected really, but they've, they've not allowed Nepal to get any consecutive passes. The type of football culture from which they come, and a small side of football, futsal is a is very big part of their football matrix. And given a little bit of space, you know, the likes of Anjan. Bista, Bishal. Good win. A little too deep for McLaren. A little drop here, though, for Ryan Grant. And potentially for Bayic. Good win. Moy, good first touch. Took him clear of the defender. Deep back heel by Irvine. Into the box by Bayic. Ryan Grant back close. It's two. And it's a double for Jamie McLaren. Couldn't miss from there, really. And in the sort of form he's in. Doesn't seem to be missing too much at all. Well, typical from Ryan Grant, the number four. He loves getting on the end uh, and getting in behind the defence as it's lined up. Very, very smart piece of play by the Sydney FC man to head the ball back across the goal. And Jamie McLaren has found that space again. Not time for his second, Australia's second, as is Bayic with the initial delivery. Very clever play from Ryan Grant and a tidy finish from Jamie McLaren. And much uh, much to what we've seen right throughout the game, there was actually one fullback in Bayich uh, swinging the ball in, and it was Ryan Grant, the other fullback on the other side, uh, uh, putting it back across the box. So, you know, all the width, uh, you know, throughout this uh, opening uh, stanza has been from uh, from the two uh, fullbacks, as we mentioned. And as Robbie mentioned earlier also, it's because uh, Lecky and Goodwin are starting out wide and then bringing their fullbacks inside nice and narrow, allowing that space for, uh, as we said, Bayich and, and Grant to get forward. Jamie McLaren. 
has profited nicely from those manoeuvres. Could be a case of fill your boots on tonight. He'd only scored one international goal before this evening in Canberra. That was against Palestine at the Asian Cup. He's now got three. And he's already on a hat-trick. And we've just played 20 minutes. Sutar. Useful touch again by Irvine. Looks in good nick. Here's Moy with a cutback. It's Jackson Irvine. They charge it down this time. In the shape of Devendra Tarmang. But Nepal looked very vulnerable every time Australia go forward. Here's Ranjit down the left. And it just squirms away from Abhishek. The result. He's going to be the furthest forward Nepalese player tonight. Lovely ball slipped through by Jackson Irvine. McLaren sniffing a treble. Not quite. Scored in every round of the FFA Cup. His Melbourne City team, of course, are into the final of that competition. Could be a big season ahead for him. And Eric Mombard's team. Frankly, he'd have been disappointed had he missed the two chances he's converted tonight. And that's what being a striker is all about, Harps. You remember well. Being a former one yourself, That's been in the right position. A very, very distant member. Here's Lecky, who sneaked in behind, trying to tee up Irvine. Taken away by Ananta Tamang. This is Dines Rasbansi. Putting the ball away just too cheaply when they do have it in Nepal, which is not too often. Challenge though by Anjan Vista. Yeah, terrific recovery from Matt Lecky. And just in that little exchange, you can see the difference in the athletic qualities of both sets of players in that one little snapshot. Here come again. Bayich couldn't reach it. Aramoy deflection. And Kieran Chemjong is grateful to see that one deflect behind for another corner. You know, what a joy it is, even just 20 minutes in, to be watching Aaron Moy in the flesh again. He's such a clever player. Another ricochet to protect the Nepal goal. And Harry Suter got on the end of the last corner delivery from Goodwin on this side. Let's see if he can do so again. He does. He scored on international debut. Harry Sutar, remember the name, from Fleetwood Town. And his mum, Heather, born in WA, will be super proud at this very moment. He grew up supporting Australia. His brother plays for Scotland. He's just scored his first international goal for the Green and Gold. Well, you're compounding the problem. They, they were doing well against Harry Sutar when they surrounded him. And they're sort of in the proximity of the Pal defenders, but they're not nearly tight enough. And it's just too dangerous a prospect with that extraordinary height advantage. Nice corner in, and he breaks his duck on debut on his first visit to his new home country. <laughs> Graham on the big fan of Big Harry. Told us pre-game that Suta grew up with posters of Socceroos on his wall. I wonder if one of them was Kevin Musket. Doubt it very much, so. <laughs> but you never know. Already the game looks well out of sight for Nepal. Three goals on the scoreboard, 72% possession for Australia. Ten shots already. And at least as many ricochets besides. And here's probably the most telling stat, 188 passes completed for Australia, just 49 for Nepal. But at least they're in a good field position here. Ranjit's throw for Anjan Vista. And a ricochet, favours Sujal Shrestha, but he's run out of real 
Oklahoma State. So play the part, and that's a big win over Spurs in the Premier League, along with teammate Matt Ryan for Brighton. Milligan, classy release for Goodwin. Behind him is Bayich. Milligan available again. Ryan Grant is bombing forward down the right, unmarked. Craig Goodwin gets the head up, tries to pick out either Lecky or Grant. And there's an acrobatic punch away from Kiran Chenjong. And now Nepal will look to counter that. Harry Suter's got that one covered, you'd fancy. Moy. It's good stickability, if that's the word, from Anjan Vista. Shown willing to... Roll up the sleeves. Well, he's got short sleeves on, but you know what I mean. Well, he'll be able to look back at the end of this game and say, I beat a Premier League player one on one. And Aaron Moy, no less. Still, in my opinion, one of the most talented players, even at that exalted level. Moy involved again. Irvine about to pull the trigger. It's a good challenge, in fact, from Ananta Tamang, who's maybe hurt himself in the process. to get back focus quickly ball lofted into the air goalkeeper Kiran is out to claim safely this time and those early moments involving Kiran Chemjong their captain no less probably didn't do much to steady the nerves of Johan Carlin there might have been two goals down before the first one went in from McLaren well, that's, his, that's his first clean take Simon it's a good point you raise because he's the most experienced player in the team not just the captain 60 caps and it's a very young team, this Nepal team. It's, it's your elder statesman to whom you look to settle the nerves. And, of course, he found the opening exchanges a little bit too much. And that was a very clean take on the back of that diving punch pass, if I can call it that way. I call it that very effective goalkeeping from him, but it's taken a while for him to find his mojo. Well, a high ball into the box is allegedly his big weakness, so... Socceroos obviously did their homework. Here's Moy. Not frontier dig here. Disguise ball instead. Beautifully done. Bayic. And it's that man, Ananta Tabang, again to the rescue for Nepal. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Nepal set up here. They've, uh, the majority of the, the corners so far have all been in-swingers uh, uh, from Australia, identifying, putting the ball into, into areas. And they've zoned uh, throughout the first uh, uh, corners and, uh, and been punished a couple of times. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how they set up here. It's not offside, as you saw from that replay. Moyes' delivery drops for Suter. And the whistle is gone. Relief for... Nepal. Yeah, I think a handball there. But before it got to the corner, has his Bayic with a good raid up the left-hand side. This is the resultant corner, and it's a handball there on Bailey Wright, well picked up by the ref. But as he's had a fantastic opportunity, rather than playing the ball square into the six-yard box, to cut it back to Jackson Irvine, who's run into the penalty area, and his prop was perfect. And as he just didn't quite see it. Well, these are the solutions and get further down the track that the likes of as is Kevin are going to have to find um, and, and mix things up with their delivery. Yeah, and, uh, and, and it's clear to see as well that uh, the fact that uh, the fullbacks in, in Beige uh, and Grant are getting forward, what that does allow is uh, us to get a lot of Australia to get a lot of bodies into the box because you know all of a sudden Goodwin, McLaren, Lecky and Irvine at times and even more get into the box uh, for those crosses. Milligan 
to Harry Suter. Never mind his height, he's probably feeling about 10 feet tall at the moment. After scoring on international debut. Moy. Straddy get moving immediately. Brian Grants trying to chest it down into the path of Lecky. Not quite. But Indra Tamang swept it away. Off the head of right. Touch back by Lecky. Disguise pass by Moy. Good work in tight spaces by Matthew Lecky. Bayich will continue his run. Moy just uh, clip the ball up and onto the hand of his opponent, Bishal Wright. Free kick. Irvine leaves it for Goodwin. Bayic. At times they just have too many options, Australia. And they found the gap for Moy. And he's dragged down on the edge of the box. Another free kick. Easy decision. Yeah, this is starting to look particularly worrying. So yeah, Nepal have been set up. They're covering spaces reasonably well. Their links to each other's teammates defensively are good. The coaches set them out nicely, but individually now they're lacking that intensity. Australia making unchallenged progress right up the field. Plenty of space starting to be found or gifted really right around the penalty area. And I'll get in before you, Simon. There's a potential avalanche awaiting. Boom, boom. Farrell Moy fancies this. That's 2 1 to me. Oh, yeah, you're winning. <laughs> Aaron Moy, and the wall did its job. Flicked up and over, another quarter. Well, do we have, and if we don't, we should start keeping them, stats for ricochets? This is double figures at least. Good defensive wall, credit to it. Left in unison, glance the ball over. Sutar waiting again in a good position. Moy's delivery. And it'll pop for Milligan, who somehow finds a gap. <laughs> oh, and the goalkeeper just hits him, I think. Kirat, he's grateful it did. Came through a whole crowd of players. But that was a better defensive set. Firstly, from the defensive wall, commented on that. Then Rohit does excellently to clear the ball. Milligan does brilliantly to make space. And this is really soft handwork from the goalkeeper. That's bounced off another metre in the opening two minutes. But he's really found himself now, thankfully, for the sake of the contest, the Nepal keeper and captain. He was the I-League goalkeeper of the year back in 17-18. Kieran Chemjong. So he's got a bit of pedigree. Here's Lecky. Being pursued by Sujal Shrestha. They work it back through Billigan. Grant always available. Clips it up in the air. Could be another chance offside against Craig Goodwin. Wouldn't have counted. Well, this has worked beautifully. And this is a part of Ryan Grant's game that doesn't get enough comment. The quality of the touch. Firstly, made the space beautifully. That is a delightful pass. Jackson Irvine was the man offside. Correctly adjudged as such by the assistant. And interfered with play by jumping at the ball there. Craig Goodwin was legal, but it was Jackson Irvine who was offside. But excellent work. Beautiful touch on that. Delivery from Ryan Grant. Outstanding work. Good pick up, Hobbs. Grant has beaten McLaren. Oh, we'll be looking at the clock and thinking if we can get through to half time perhaps without further damage we can reset it has been one-way traffic Nepal yet to register a single shot Kevin I'll ask you this question and, and Australian teams don't face the same physical athletic golf 
between us and our opponent's national team or club, I'm thinking now particularly through Champions League experience. However, when you get a sec. Here's Bayic, up makes the defender, looking for McLaren. Good take again by Kiran, he is growing into the game. I think this is another example of Aziz making great ground. And he has options rather than across the line of the penalty area to cut it back to oncoming midfielders. But he, he attacks with great instinct, Aziz Bayic, and we, he's just got to get the team, has to get him to find a better end product. Because you look at the queue of gold shirts around the penalty area. So, Kevin, I'll just get back to you on that. On the times in Champions League matches when you're up against, say, the Japanese clubs, fantastic Korean athletes, Japanese athletes, how do you address that, which is Nepal's issue at the moment, from the bench? Yeah, you, you're probably right. Um, I'll get your thoughts in a minute. Moski, because Australia building another attack. Good win, headed away by Nanta Tabang. On you go, Muskie. You're right, the, the gulf between, uh, you know, us travelling across in the Champions League is not as big as, you know, what we're witnessing tonight, without doubt. But uh, particularly away from uh, away from home with the different conditions. And, and the key is what, what you're trying to... Uh, what you try to uh, eliminate that by is having more possession. And, and that's uh, something that we've clearly got here tonight is an abundance of possession. And, and going forward, we're, when we're playing against better teams, the emphasis has uh, got to be to, to remain or to keep that type of possession because, uh, as we've seen tonight, I mean, Nepal uh, have dropped off 20, 30 yards uh, further than they, they did in the first five minutes after their first goal. So, you know, you're trying to negate it by, you know, firstly keeping more possession. Kieran's got to be quick here. And I'll be best advised to get it out of play, which Ranji does. Yeah, so mainly that, that possession harps is, uh, you know, nine-tenths. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, at the further you go up and the harder teams that uh, you play against, you know, we don't look to that possession as valuable as, you know, it is clearly here tonight for us. This time by Milligan. And Jan Bista felt the full weight of this. National hero after scoring those two goals against Chinese Taipei in the last qualifier. Plays for the Manang Marshangdi Club, who are the champions of Nepal. That's Bista. A competition that only just restarted yeah. last year after a five-year hiatus. And I was just going to chime in with that, Simon. And you'd reported that, and it's, of course, widely reported. But that's part of the context for tonight. The bulk, 99% of these players are ensconced in their domestic league, and it's been completely on again, off again, mostly off again recently. So to prepare a national team from that backdrop, very, very difficult assignment. That, that, that they're at all competitive is a credit to them. It's perhaps why Anjan Bista earns a bit of extra money. There he is on the ball, rather casually so, as a singer. Well, I was going to say, he's like Nepal's Joey Seat. <laughs> is he going <laughs> to take a leave of absence and go and start a rap career in that know. home? You never know. So we see it will not feature in the new A-League season, which, of course, kicks off tomorrow night in Adelaide. Adelaide United against Sydney, the cup holders against the champions. Can't wait for the new campaign. It's going to be a great season. Good touch and turn by Goodwin, who's seen a lot of the ball. Advantage played, Goodwin again with the cutback, looking for Leckie, might still drop for him. Only partly away, Milligan drove it straight into Devendra Tabang. Australia buzzing around the box again, a slip by Leckie, Moy thumps it goalwards. Vishal Rai got the full brunt of that one and has remained down inside the penalty area. Might have even got it full on the noggin, I think. Vishal Rai, but Australia were just peppering the Nepal goal there. Oh, Aussie's pumped a couple of heavy hits into the penalty area. Milligan doesn't muck around. I mean, there's a not many more pure strikers of football than Mark Milligan. And speaking of, it's probably Aaron Moy. And that is a fuzzball, that one. His head will be ringing. This, for me, is a concern. Due concern being shown by the match officials and the medical staff. 
A real bell ringer, Robbie Slater, down on the pitch side. Yeah, look, that one hurts, especially when it's cold. Look, he's obviously not feeling as cold as us, particularly me with my two uh, big toes frozen uh, down here at pitch side. But look, hit from that range, we know how hard Aaron Moy can strike a ball. That certainly would have the medical staff worried. But just something I've noticed in the last few minutes is they're starting to find a few players in the, in the space. Most of the game, it's been... Wing is tucking in, Ryan Grant as his badge, that's continuing, but just before, and when you get the ball in, in between the lines, the ability to turn and then eliminate a defensive midfielder really opens it up and cause that little flurry there, which ended with that fierce drive from Aaron Moy. Thanks, Robbie. Six of Australia's 14 shots have been blocked. Unfortunately, still searching for the ricochet stats, Harps, but I'm sure that's up near double figures. Here's a chance for Nepal. Hear their fans roar whenever they get over halfway. Sujal Shrestha on the ball. Ranjit in advance of him. Can they at least fashion an opportunity? Imagine the noise here if they scored. Rohit Chand. No way through. They win it back through Ananta Tabang. Now with Dides Razbansi. Looking for the ball over the top, and it has to be pretty accurate to get over the top of Harry Suter. Abhishek Rizal appealing forlornly for a foul, which the referee was never likely to give. Order is quickly restored. It's Jackson Irvine with space and time. Nepal back in numbers now. Aaron Moy to drive edge of the box. Never really looked likely. Well, he should fancy himself tonight, Aaron Moy. Wonderful conditions to play on a just a beautiful surface. And he's going to get plenty of opportunity like this. And why not fire away? It's such a key for the Australian team. Not just tonight, but throughout what we're hoping is a successful campaign for Graham, campaign for Graham Arnold. Just on Graham Arnold, uh, Kevin. Obviously a game in Chinese Taipei to come in a few days' time. Second half, you think you might be looking at a few of his key players and thinking, right, OK, game's won. Time to have a breather and get yourself set up for Tuesday. It, it, he'd, uh, he'd have a, a plan in place uh, about who's not going to be playing on uh, on Tuesday uh, in the next game, and, and that'll affect, obviously, uh, who comes off and, and who stays on in the second half here tonight. There's the Australian bench. Look at the chilly, don't they? Dimi Petratos, a late call-up due to the injury to Massimo Luongo. Brandon Borello hoping for another opportunity. Here's Goodwin, who's replaced him on that left flank tonight. Back through Moy. And the intervention by... And John Bista will carry it forward. It's a good ch chase back by Lecky. Mate, it's just monstered by Matthew Lecky, which is no disgrace on Anjan Bista. Lecky, Lecky is a fearsome athlete. But he just chewed him up. Passes continue to rack up for Australia. And almost up around the 350 mark. Milligan. This guy's to the byline for Bayich. Looking to hang it up to that back post. Oh, really, oh. rack his boots around it. Disappointing from Aziz Bayich. Well, the good news is he did deliver one cross, which resulted in the Jamie McLaren goal. Found Ryan Grant, who's headed square back across for Jamie McLaren. But otherwise... This is a real area marked for improvement for as is. Busy team talk, you fancy coming up for Johan Carlin. He was saying pre game that the bulk of his coaching career is in coach education. Uh, certainly loving the opportunity of being in the hot seat again for the likes of Australia. Here's a chance. Oh, I guess we count that as a shot from Abhishek Rizal. Tame as it was.
But why not, Andy? Chance to cover yourself in glory if he catches it right. Be a national hero. Fortunately for him, he didn't. And Australia had one more before the break. They were three to luck, you'll remember, against Kuwait at the interval. To one additional minute at the end of the first half. A chance for you to give us your summary. It's been yeah, pretty much one-way traffic. It has, and, and you know, given that the soccerers have grown into the half, you know, well, could be another one here. Jackson Irvine, little slip by Ranjit. He recovered well. It's one of those games where you know there's, you've got everything to lose, really, because everyone expects. Plenty of goals and plenty of efforts on goal. And Graham Arnold, I think, given the circumstances, will be reasonably happy. Here's Lucky. Deflection. It's four. Oh, hang on. Flags up. Flags up. It's not going to count. Matthew Lucky, 40 given. The Socceroos a 4 0 lead. The referee is taking counsel from his linesman. There was a deflection on the way through. The flag popped up immediately. And the referee blew his whistle. Interesting replay this one's going to be because the deflection was clearly from uh, the power player. It's an own goal, it should yeah, stand. Should be four. Well, that's national capital. The home fans have been well entertained. And as we get the second half underway, no doubt they want to see a few more goals to boost that goal difference. Even despite the relative lack of quality of the opposition goal difference could still be important of course after Chinese Taipei and they've got that big game in Jordan who have caused Australia lots of problems in the past yeah that's the big game of this group stage for sure Jordan away and the Socceroos can be well pleased with that first half but if they were to take a straw poll of the 16 or 17,000 at the stadium tonight and the tens of thousands around the country watching it will be yeah more goals but let's get some variety let's show that we can mix it up let's find some players who can beat a man one-on-one -on -one. let's shoot from range and hopefully miss defenders because they've blocked plenty and you sound like you're being fussy perhaps but i'm sure this is what people watching are seeing if this is a test kevin that maybe the Socceroos can pass in this second half and, uh, and at the same time, Harps, yeah, it's a, a completely valid uh, point. But, but watching the, the team play now, there's clearly uh, the, there's instructions, clear instructions on, on, on the type of uh, attacks that we're trying to create and the type of goal we're trying to score, which is, is just, in, just as important. But you're right, finding that uh, uh, different way is important. Not like you're looking to stretch the legs down the right. Going to be a goal kick. Last touch off Lecky. He can't quite believe that. He couldn't believe that he didn't have a goal to his name as well in stoppage time in the first half. We're still of the mind, gentlemen, that that was the incorrect decision. Oh, there's no doubt it was an incorrect decision. That was good coverage provided by Devendra Tamang. It's a thankless task chasing Matthew Lecky up and down the field. He did it well. Tellingly, though, of the two players, one got to their feet pretty quickly. He's taking in some big ones. It was Devendra Tamang. This is Ravi Paswan. Who links up with Rohit Chen, but they're heading in the wrong direction, Nepal. And Anant uh, Tamang has given his goalkeeper a problem as well. Kieran deals with it uh, quite nicely. He loses out, so too does Rohit Chan. Australia back on the front foot again. It's Jackson Irvine. And that was troubling, unfortunately, for the whole city midfielder. Not quite in the right direction. No, and a favourable ricochet for a change for the Socceroos. A good combination. And Jackson Irvine never needs a second invitation to have an effort on goal. He's a very dangerous player, and he makes good contact there. I'll tell you what, he was close as well. John Bista, but uh, to no great effect for the Gorkalis, as they're nicknamed. They 
could perhaps do Australia a favour if they could uh, produce a shot result in Jordan. Same night as Australia play in Chinese Taipei. Having to play their first four games of these qualifiers away from home. The Nepalese, because their stadium was badly damaged during the earthquake that tragically killed so many in 2015. And he's not quite ready to go. Harry Suter felt the full weight of that challenge from Amishek Rizal. He's a tough guy, he's run it off, no problems. Oh, there's another late one. This time from Bista. Referee Al Katiri just trying to settle things down a little bit. Here's the first one on uh, Harry Suter. Yeah, that's the, the ref Ooh, to have a chat. What? Here's a stray leg for sure. That was high, wasn't it? And here's the follow up one. More genuine attempt to play the ball, but mistimed from Anjan Bista. Suta. Bayic. Not the best touch from McLaren. That's the problem for Nepal. Just really struggled to get out. It's a good steal on the blind side by Bishal Rai. Now a chance perhaps. And John Bista to play it to his left. Why hit Chan to float it forwards? And they're going to get a corner. Nepal. Well, that should bring their fans to life. Listen to this noise around the stadium. Their first corner of the game. I think they've just won the World well, Cup. They've, Brilliant. They've, they've started this second half with plenty of energy. And soccer is finding it difficult, more difficult than they did in the first, to get that settled, controlled possession. He's been a key, Bishal. Very, very accomplished player in a different set of circumstances with a, a, a stronger team. The likes of Dishal would really cause some trouble. Very good technician. Let's see what he can do with this corner. Well, they're not going to have any great height advantage if they go aerially, which Bishal Rai looks as though he's about to do. Referee wants to speak to Abhishek Rizal. Just tell him to stop impeding Ryan Grant and the goalkeeper Matt Ryan who might just have a bit of work to do here Bishal Rai's corner off the head of Milligan Moyes head went the wrong way but Goodwin will complete the tidy up just a little bit of encouragement for Johan Karl inside Devendra Tamang it's a good challenge showed a bit of grit the Gorkalis here's Ravi Paswan now with Anjan Bista, looks to launch it inside the box. And Matt Ryan yeah. finally has to do some work. Not really seeing much of a future in that approach play. But again, they won the ball back with great intensity in midfield. Goodwin, meantime, at the other end of the pitch. Jackson Irvine oh! thought about the shot. Clayton Lecky instead. Behind him is Grant. One, two, three, four, five in the box for Australia. Patient build up. Step over from Moy. Lucky. Ryan Grant. And the goalkeeper Kieran to claim. Just with that there, Simon, when we are getting the ball in that final third, being in the box, as you mentioned there, is, is vitally important, but arriving in the box is far, has far greater importance. Arriving late so you're not marked, rather than being in there waiting, uh, certainly helps uh, anyone delivering the ball. Timing your runs. Australia have got good weapons in that regard, haven't they? Not just from set pieces with Suter, but Jackson Irvine more than handy in the air as well. That lucky, I seem to remember, has scored the odd one off the noggin as well. Changes a foot, perhaps. Postelos Yanu. Just taking a stroll down the touchline. Prior to some limbering up exercises, perhaps. There are two or three Australian subs already going through their routines. Yeah, well, Awema Bill is one of them. And just doing a quick walk around the stadium at half time and before, there is an extraordinary number of Sudanese 
of the Sudanese community here watching the game tonight. Now, Dennis has lost out, but uh, Irvine and Goodwin are on the same wavelength. And his inclusion in the game, if that's to happen, will get as big a cheer as the Nepalese are getting. Really noticeable. Lovely touch by Irvine. Goodwin, McLaren on the hat-trick, of course, waiting in the middle. Doesn't arrive. Grant to try and reset all the way back through Bailey Wright. I think Matt Ryan's had more touches in this opening 10 minutes of the second half than he had in the entirety of the first. Captain play intelligently by Grant, and Moy is too strong for his defender. Waiting back post is Craig Goodwin. Good save, Kieran Chemjong to deny Australia a fourth goal, and Craig Goodwin his first at international level. Well, a terrific bounce from Ryan Grant to the on-charging Aaron Moy, who puts it right on the spot. Good contact from Goodwin. The angle's not that friendly. It's a great chance Australia should have scored, there's no doubt. But the angle wasn't that friendly for Craig Goodwin. Keeper had it all covered on the near post. And he, he wants to uh, enjoy the moment a bit longer, I think, Kieran, because he's just dropped down after barking instructions to his uh, teammates following that save. He now wants a bit of attention. Chance to bring in Kevin Musket uh, again. Muskie, interested in your thoughts, obviously, we're, we're 10 minutes into the second half now. If you're Johan Carlin and you've watched that first 45 minutes, you're three goals down, could have been 5-6, let's be honest. What's your team talk? What do you say? I well, found myself in that position not so long ago. So, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I didn't want to bring that up, yeah, Muskie. Uh, but so obviously, you, say, you don't say what I said on that evening or afternoon, but... Uh, Look, uh, I think from, from his perspective as well, he, he, he sensed as that half wore on that they were deteriorating physically. Um, so, you know, they've started the half again. They, they seem to be having a go and trying to press, and, you know, they've forced a few uh, attacks the, into the Australian half. But as the, the half goes on, the, the, the reality will set in that they, they just can't compete physically. Um, so it will revert back to, as the half goes on, they'll drop deeper and deeper. And, you know, how much can he do to prevent that? Not too much at all. Lots of happy Nepalese fans, despite the scoreline. Kieran, a goalkeeper, one of the real superstars of this team. I'm told he's only the fifth Nepalese goalkeeper ever to own a car. And that's how little they get paid for playing football in Nepal. Most of them are semi-pro. Well, I meant to do the foreign exchange conversion, but I think it's 10,000 rupees a month. So, What's that in Aussie goals? I was just going to say, I, 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 he wasn't quick enough uh, to do that conversion, but I'm sure people at home... I've just had in my ear, it's about 130 Aussie dollars right, there you go. a month. Well, you're not going to buy a clutch of Bentleys and no. glittering watches on that if you take the point. But, I, but it shows the difference, it, doesn't it? Completely, but what I will say is that Part of, um, just going off your discussion with Kevin, part of the chat from the coach would have been, you know what, if you put a little bit more pressure, there were two or three examples where very good players, I referred to one of them, you took the ball off Aaron Moore and believe that you can cut and taste moments like that through the second half to start the second half. They're way more boisterous in the challenges here. It's been a feature of the second half. The, the expectation, the likelihood, is that they're not going to be able to last the distance. But I'm sure the coach said, mate, whilst we're still in it, stand up for yourselves. They've just got two legs and a beating heart the same as you. Uh, make them get past you. Don't give it to them. Show that Gurkha spirit. Oh, a proud fighting nation. Nepal. the same class technically as the Australians, but uh, doing the nation proud at the moment. Here's Lecky inside the box. McLaren just looking to side foot it home for his hat-trick. Took a touch on the way through. It will be an Australian corner, might have been more. That was a nice build-up again. And there's a look at the queue. Square of three players. Goodwin was running through. 
Jackson Irvine again. You have to suggest that maybe they were better options than Jamie McCarran on that moment. Aaron Moy to hang it up. Suta, oh, deflected in. It is a fourth goal this time. It's got in off Dinis Razbansi. Suta accepts the congratulations, but I'm pretty sure that will go down as an own goal. Or maybe he will claim it, the big lad. It's some debut. Whatever the case, and Australia have extended their lead to four. Well, again, the short one to take the attention away from Suta, but it's not enough because in the end he wins the ball uncontested. It's not the most convincing header, let's face it. But the deflection goes the way of the Socceroos. Plenty didn't in the first half. But this time off Dinesh, it goes into the Nepal goal. Just as Nepal were finding a little bit of belief. Australia extend their lead and Apostolos Yadu is being ready. There's perhaps the first substitution of the night. McLaren, if he's to be the man to make way, will want his hat-trick before that change is made. He would be the natural swap. Yeah, and I'm not sure if, if that, you know, brings more focus to aerial delivery into the box, Kevin, because of Yanu's height. But of the four goals scored, three have come from the head of Australians. Yeah, and uh, and you picked up on the first ten minutes of the second half, you know, the flip side to your question, uh, Simon, you know, the Australian team talk, you know, would have been on lines, let's remain disciplined, let's keep progressing in that processes. And we've started with relatively sloppy. We've got that goal off another set piece, but uh, we've started relatively uh, sloppy from that perspective. Maybe that goal will just refocus the Australians. <laughs> Milligan. Touch by McLaren wasn't the surest, but it's found lucky. That's the needle, finds Bayich, Australia in behind, Kieran puts it away. And Jackson Irvine just can't score for love nor money tonight. He's had a few opportunities, and again he's denied. Well, couldn't quite cut that one back enough, maybe that's a more difficult one. Jackson Irvine close. A week on the training field with Gertrude and the Baker, that late United will pass his bake, I reckon. Beige because they just keep cutting them back. Adelaide United, as we saw in the Cup semi-final. First change for Australia. Aaron Moy withdrawn. Apostolos Yanu thrown on. So, maybe a change of shape. He will no doubt play alongside McLaren up top. Meantime, Lecky into the penalty area. Thump clear by Nepal. Let's briefly go down to Robbie Slater, who's been listening into Graham Arnold's. Uh, Words of wisdom, Robbie? Yeah, well, he's changed the system, so he's gone with two nines and dropped Jackson Irvine back beside Milligan, but he, he definitely wants the, the wide players to drop into those pockets. And the big message from him, and he's up, and as soon as the ball goes back backwards, he's livid. He wants them to drive forward. He wants everything to go forward. Doesn't look too happy at the moment, uh, Robbie. You know him better than most. Is he happy with this performance? He's not happy, I've told you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Kevin, that just calibrating that change to put the, the extra centre forward in is an assessment that we're just one pl one body short for those crosses. And uh, and, and as we've seen uh, earlier, it, it, it shouldn't have been the case, and maybe that's why Arnie's uh, uh, changed it, because it shouldn't have been the case with... Uh, Irvine and, and, and Moy making the extra two plays. We should have actually, you know, had them driving the box. To their credit, they have been. Irvine, McLaren trying to stretch. It came off Ananta Tamang and into the grateful gloves of the goalkeeper. To, be, to their credit, Harps, they have been making runs, getting into the box, but all the delivery has gone towards McLaren and, and hardly any deliveries come uh, back to the, the penalty spot, if you like, uh, for them to pick up balls and, and side foot them into the, into the net. Last Australian to score a hat trick at international level. Nilla Yedinak against Tom Juris. 
in that two-legged playoff, second leg in Sydney. Jamie McLaren has the chance to do that. And is uh, Harry Suter the second Scots Australian to score on debut after Martin Boyle at, in Brisbane? Yeah. Either one or two more down the years, you'd fancy. Brother John plays for Scotland and for Hearts at club level. Going to be a quiz question in future years, isn't he? Along with the Boatengs, Kevin Prince and Jerome, who played for different nations, Ghana and Germany. Natal are going to make a change, and Johan Kallen has reached for his biggest star off the bench, Dimal Gartimaga. Casey left-footed striker. In time, they've got a problem with Anjan Bistra, who's gone down with an injury. Australia perhaps pondering whether to put the ball out. They've opted not to. Don't have to, of course. Bistra's back on his feet. Irvine gets it out to Grant. Milligan. Quick, crisp passing by Australia. Lecky finds the gap. Grant, they're queuing up in the middle. Craig Goodwin on his wrong foot. Way over the top. Well, we got one. <laughs> They've been calling for it for most of the game, and Ryan Grant delivered. Now, this is the alternative. This is the option that Australia hasn't utilised enough. And Ryan Grant, the beautiful execution of that cutback pass, unfortunately, it was to Craig Goodwin's right foot rather than perhaps his left. So here's that change. Abhishek Rizal is withdrawn, and the big roar is for Bimal Gartimaga. Just 21. Plays his club football in the Maldives with the TC Sports Club. The youngest Nepalese debutant ever at just 14. And he actually had a couple of stints in Europe. He once scored four goals in a trial game for Twente Enskede back in 2013, and also had. Uh, a spell training with the Anderlecht under-16 squad and Genk as well. So he's got a little bit of pedigree, particularly by Nepalese standards. Well, four goals in a trial game is normally enough to secure a contract. Visa, visa issues, visa issues. Well, there you go. Surely they knew that before they'd invited him for the trial. Uh, Funny old world sometimes. Players have been signed, sight unseen for less than that. Here's Craig Goodwin. Might think about a strike here. Still waiting for his first international goal, just his fifth cap tonight. And by, and by my reckoning, that's the first shot from distance in the second half. There were a sequence of them in the first half, but we haven't taken aim from distance. Jackson Irvine had one off that ricochet scenario on the edge of the box with his right foot, but we haven't set up a shooting chance and seen someone take it in this second half until Craig Goodwin. Now playing in Saudi, of course, with Alwada after a stellar campaign with Adelaide United last year. Here's Milligan. That's the return off Bayic. Lucky had so much time. And Nepal perhaps beginning to tire. Oh, dear. Dines, perhaps angered by the fact he scored an own goal tonight, has thumped that right into the midriff of Aziz Bayic. And he felt that one. There's a crowd figure, 18,563, boosted by several thousand cheering on Nepal. And they had a good time by the looks of it, despite the scoreline. You would hope that love of football, particularly in Western Sydney, is uh, being tapped into by the A-League clubs. Here's Ravi Paswan. Nothing to worry, Matt Ryan.
And just on the Australian Nepalese links, Andy. Interesting to know that Gary Phillips, former NSL title winning coach with Sydney Olympic back in the day, has just been appointed technical director of Nepal. Yeah. And you know, the backstory to Gary Phillips makes that appointment even more remarkable. As a teenager, he had to choose between surfing and football because he was a national level, like a, an Australian champion board rider. I knew he looked like a surfy dude. So he picked football, and now he ends up in a landlocked country with the biggest <laughs> mountains in the world. What's he going to surf? The melt. <laughs> He'll find a way. He'll be flying home pretty regularly. <laughs> Or he'll be volunteering for the trips to the Maldives. I'll give you that tip. He's a good fellow, is Gary. Wish him all the best with that appointment. Partly funded by the AFC, their development programs. We're going to get another change for Australia shortly. And we're going to get a look at Aidan Frustich. We haven't seen him since he made his one and only appearance for Australia against Brazil back in June 2017. And of course, the recently departed Rudy Gudendorf move to Nepal after his stint with the Socceroos. It's a well-trodden path. Here's Goodwin. Irvine slides it into the path of Bayic. Yes, yes, yes. Here's that change for Australia. And Craig Goodwin, who had a few opportunities tonight, uh, Kevin Musket, is withdrawn in favour of Aidan Rostic. Yeah, another substitution. And what's what's been interesting since the the, the, the earlier substitution for Australia was we've effectively taken a, a midfielder out of that uh, in Moy uh, from those zones and, and, and had another striker. And what it has created is one less option for us to hit when we're building up and coming through uh, throughout our defensive into that midfield area uh, in that having two strikers. and has affected the uh, flow to our game a little bit. Good pick-up. Uh, Aidan Frustich offers 23 year old who plays with Groningen in the Netherlands and his best friend in football is Leroy Sane at Manchester City here's the other sub Postelos Janu and Bejic to clip it up and Janu just couldn't get the connection he wanted and uh, with Rustic on Matthew Leckie's deployed more centrally as Janu picking the ball up and going again I like the look of Apostolos Janu, Kevin. I'd like to see. He's only getting scraps in the national team. He's clearly, at the moment, down the picking order. Um, doesn't fit that poacher type Gerd Muller, if I'm invoking a great name there, but you understand the, the point I'm making. And Would you like to see him with, with more game time? Well, and, and these are the games, uh, and Hubs, we don't know what uh, Graham's planning for, for the next game, but these are the type of games uh, where you'd like to see someone uh, give more opportunity. McLaren, uh, obviously Jamie's had that opportunity tonight and he's taken it. Uh, a little bit of variation, uh, as we've been mentioning throughout, because all our chances and, and efforts on goal have come from uh, crosses and, and crosses to uh, the first uh, the first striker in McLaren. So uh, trying to create, uh, find another way to create chances uh, in these games where you can experiment He's obviously important. First little flashpoint involving Bimal Gatimaga. Clash of heads with uh, Bailey Wright. And Wright was not that keen on the hand of friendship that was offered by way of apology from Gatimaga. It's been a game that's been played by and large in a good spirit. And mainly in Nepal's half of the pitch. Here's Milligan. Graham Arnold will just want a little bit more quality in the final third. They dropped off quite a bit against Q8. Very good, the first 45. Q8, with respect to Nepal, are a, a better team than the Gorkalis. Came back into things, second period. Australia hunting more goals here. Rustic with the corner. And the whistle's gone for an infringement. Yeah, well, with 15-plus stoppages to go, playing at home against a team that bears by comparison, Graham Arnold would be understandably frustrated that they haven't threatened the goal more in this second half. 
It's going to be one of the talking points unless they can fly through the gears in the last 15 minutes. It will be a talking point. The three points never really in question. Jackson Irvine has had one effort that's just shaved the post. Craig Goodwin flashed one wide, the own goal. But, uh, after the break, that's been pretty much that. In terms of real pressure on Kieran Chemjong's goal, maybe that's why our mobile is being readied to add a little bit of zip down the flank. Meantime, a rare opportunity perhaps for Nepal, and one that they've horribly wasted. Not the best from Bishal Wright. There is the super speedy Mobile. Looks as though he's even too quick for his hairdresser. I know how he feels. <laughs> Chested down by Yanu. Lecky. Square by Irvine. Milligan out for Grant. Yanu in a good position. Not a great cutback, though. Easily swept away by Rohit Chand. He wanted to make that uh, third change then, but lines were a little slow to attract the referee's attention. Our mobile has to wait a moment or two more. Lucky pursued by Ranjit back through right, stab at the outside of the boot, which. It really looked likely to come off. And Nepal standing firm at the moment. Here's Frostic. Lecky. Milligan wanted it played square. He's in a good position as well. Totally unmarked. Still is. They go for the cross instead. And Bayic is on the end of it. But uh, headed away from goal rather than towards it. Back they come again. Aiden Frostic to try and place it. Easy take for Kieran. Well, it's a shot outside the box that forces a save, so I congratulate Aiden Rustic for that. It's uh, been slightly heavy going for the Socceroos in the last few moments. And I'm sure the, uh, the thinking, in part at least, behind an hour mobile is to get a player on with ball at feet who's keen to run it defenders spark things up a little bit well you know he's going to do that so let's see what the man from FC Michelin in Denmark can do Matt Lackey who should have had a goal to his uh, name tonight but wrongly ruled out in first half stoppage time takes his leave and on comes Awa Mobil Twelfth cap for the Socceroo Flyer and a good performance from Matt Lecky, Kevin. He's just the article, isn't he? He's developed so well over the years and such a composed performer. Yeah, and, and relatively probably underestimated the, the, the work and the crew he's having in Germany and uh, playing in a, in a different position, obviously further, f uh, much further in advance on the field here and in, enjoying it. You can tell that he's enjoying his football, particularly in his last two games for the, for the national team. So that's the ruse, three changes made. Adam Taggart, who you just saw on the sidelines, might get an opportunity against Chinese Taipei during the week. Meantime, second change for Nepal. And Anjan Bista, their two-goal hero against Chinese Taipei, is going to be withdrawn. I was impressed with him first half. I thought he was probably close to Nepal's best player in a team that was really having to defend for yeah. most of the game. Yeah, but it's hard. I would encourage people not to judge the likes of Anjan Bista in a team like Nepal, which is so heavily outgunned. Put him in a, a stronger organisation. He, Bishal Rai, 
and the substitute Bimal, the number 10, those three could really contribute to a team that has a greater stature, greater physical presence, greater tactical awareness because they can play the game. Here's Mobile. And we say that a lot about Thailand's two best players, don't we? Tirasin and Shanatip. Put them in a good team. Wow, they look good. Here's Mobile. He does look good. And Irvine trying to get on the end of it. McLaren was there too. Now it's starting to get in each other's way, but you know, that little bit of difference from Owe Mobile. Just that one on one ability. He just squares up. Get the ball in between his feet and then pass the defender. Makes the space, delivers the ball. And you would prefer, Kevin, the midfielder coming through to finish that one rather than a striker peeling away from goal. Speaks yeah. to your point earlier, Muskie, doesn't it? Yeah, and the, there was uh, quite a few bodies in the box there, but again, once again it was, you know, people trying to score from static positions, and uh, it's always, it's easy to be marked once you're static. Arriving in the box gives you uh, a greater um, chance of getting more, more perch on the ball. Here's Mobile popping up on the left flank now. Moving away from Paswan and Bishal Rai wanted to do it all himself. That would have been some goal. But he's added something already off the bench, our mobile. It was a naughty boy a couple of weeks ago, got, uh, got a red card against Michelin's big rivals for the Danish Championship, FC Copenhagen. It's not like Owl, he's such a mild-mannered guy normally, isn't he? Well, he has had some flash shot, I recall a couple of flash moments in the A-League, so he's got a very competitive edge to him. Garty Marga, useful ball, but Grant had it covered. Without which, of course, players can't cut their way through to the top of the game. Here, Here he goes, goes again. again. Said stereo, that hot. Two runnings. <laughs> Good night from me. Oh dear. That's ten minutes. It's been a comfortable night for Australia. They want more goals. Are they going to get one here? Might well, have just flicked off the arm that of Devendra Tamang. No real appeals from the Australians. And Ranjit able to clear. A term of interest by Bailey Wright. Anywhere will do for Ravi Paswat. <laughs> Ravi Paswat is a right winger by trade, but he's helping out his right fullback more often than not. It's been that sort of game for Nepal. The supporters continue to do a conga line around the stadium here in Canberra. Meantime, Mobil inside the box. And Nepal got back in time and in enough numbers to close the gaps. Breaks here for Bayic. Top of the box is Apostolos Yadu. Charged down by Rohit and disguise passed by Milligan. Didn't quite come off and Nepal could have a break on here. Needed to release earlier. Did Bimal Gartimaga. Well, that's excellent defensive midfield work from Jackson Irvine, who, because of the way the ball broke, Kevin, was on the wrong side of the play. He was a, made the ground beautifully, and that's what you need your defensive midfielders to do around that centre circle to tidy up those breakaways. And, uh, and since the, the change that we spoke about earlier, he's been deployed, obviously, alongside uh, Millsy, uh, and he's had less, far less influence uh, on the game whilst, obviously, do, uh, doing his job in there. Still just the one second half goal for Graham Arnold's team. Could him an own goal. It's uh, blatant holding by Ranjit against Aidan Krustic. And finally, the referee's patience has run out. First yellow card of the night. What a welcome bit of innovation is from Rustic. Does his body well to get the ball on the ground. And then let's have a go at something. Beautiful little shimmy. That was a superb bit of work. We need more of those ingredients in the final third. You need to break up defences.
defensive, defensive organisations and get individual defenders starting to think about their assignment one-on-one -on -one with an attacker whom they're not sure if they're going to pass it or dribble past them. At the moment, they're pretty comfortable that Nozzi's going to pass it. Well, set pieces of Provided plenty of opportunities for Australia tonight. They've scored from one or two of them. Let's see if they can add to their tally here. Bustich to deliver. And Suter was on the end of it again. Well, that was the hat-trick moment. Had great contact. Let's go down to uh, Robbie Slater, who's pitch side, get his view of that latest opportunity and the way things are going for Australia. Well, you look at Harry Suter and you're just thinking, well, you got to hit the target from there, and if he probably does, he scores. But look, I think the second half. Look, I think Nepal have just made the decision that look, if they open up too much, they're you know they're going to concede a lot of goals. So they've just been solid. Back four at times, even a, a midfielder dropping in to make five. If it's not five and three and one, it's two banks of four. And look, the Socceroos have struggled to move the ball quick enough and lacked a little bit of inspiration. That individual quality you know, to break them down. They've been very comfortable, of course, but Graham Arnold has not looked unhappy, but he's been frustrated. He wants them to drive forward. He wants them to always play forward. And he feels that, you know, he feels very frustrated that they probably haven't got more goals than what they have. Still time. Well, not too much of it. Just over five minutes. Square by Bayic for Milligan. Helped on by Frustich, nice movement this, McLaren sniffing the hat-trick, might break for Mobile, across the face and still it won't go in for Australia. Grant wins it back. Janu, so many bodies in the way. Frustich to turn and drive again, and he's just bundled over. I think more through tiredness than anything else. Well, he shouldn't be, because he's the substitute, Tez Tamang. Tired, that is. Third change for Nepal. Vishal Rai is going to be brought to the sidelines and he's going to be replaced by another Tamang. That's four we're going to have on the pitch now. This is Santos Tamang. Defensive midfielders, Johan Kallen tries to plug some of those gaps and keep the scoreline respectable. A free kick given away by one of his other changes gives Australia another opportunity. One of the things I like about Fustich is he's demanded the ball, including from this set piece. And he's second international. He wants to take responsibility on his shoulders. Rebounds back off the wall. Cross stitch again. Seeking to make amends. Milligan. Another foul. Again, similar sort of position. Other side of the D. This time by Rohit Chand. Well, Rustic would fancy himself again. It's on the wrong side of the penalty area for him. You'd fancy clear free kick. Rustic has been impressive off the bench. I'd say he's had four or five opportunities with the ball. With four of them, he's made good. He can't do much else than come off the bench and have a conversion rate like that. Oh, Mobile striding out. Oh, and having a crack from here. Well, he's pulled rank, hasn't he? Oh, Mobile. Pulled rank on the skipper. An insurrection. Well, certainly on Frustich. Let's see what our mobile can do. Looking for the Cristiano Ronaldo that you could hear from the, the yelp of frustration. He knew it wasn't right the moment he left the boot. Well, again, the appetite off the bench, and you can question maybe some of the execution or, or decisions, but the appetite off the bench to affect change to the game, which is sort of the byword for our mobile. He doesn't muck around. Every time I've seen him play, A-League or international, he has a go at doing something. Tries to break 
the status quo of the game. And for that, I applaud him. Top of Ravi Paswan for Bayic. That sort of sums up Australia's second half. Just not quite been up to muster. They go again through Frostich. Mobile. Credit to Nepal as well, they have defended a lot better in this second half, albeit a lot deeper. Off the chest of Irvine, McLaren, is this the hat-trick? It is! The first Australian to score a hat-trick in almost two years since Miller Jedinak netted three against Honduras in that World Cup playoff. And it's a night to remember for Jamie McLaren, and it's 5-0. Well, look at Milligan at the base of the attack here, and the, his spray passes around all night. But Jackson Irvine making the forward target, then dropping off the line. That's beautiful intuition to bounce that off his chest. Nicely timed run, good control, Jamie McLaren, and a really excellent finish. Ball bouncing away from goal, defender in close proximity. A friendly range, it's true, but he finished with a plot. All you can do is be there to finish those opportunities. Oh, oh that Bill staggering like a man who's been shot to the sidelines. He's got it in the you-know-where. That doesn't tickle. <laughs> Barney's having a wry smile, but he knows that hurts. <laughs> Counter Mauer. Good to see Graham Arnold with a smile back on his face, at least. Overall, is he going to be happy with this performance? Well, he'll be here. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think so. I think he'll be unhappy. Is not the word. Frustrated, definitely. I would suggest frustrated um, because there are very obviously bigger tests down the path. And what will Maybe a problem for the Socceroos is not their structure, not their discipline, uh, not their tactics. The lack of imagination in the front third. It's Bimal Gatimaga. Could there be consolation perhaps for Nepal at the end? Santosh Tamang and then slung into the box, hopefully by Ravi Paswan. Just catching practice for Ryan, which is pretty much all he's had all night. And we're almost into the final minutes of the three additional, as signalled by the fourth official. Time perhaps for one more, Krustic. Milligan, Nabil with time to turn, Yanu, bowled over, no foul, Milligan, first touch was a little bit uh, heavy, will stitch out for Grant on the right, they're queuing up in the penalty area, Nepal sat very deep, Nabil, they weave this way in that, trying to find an opening, Time almost up. In by Grant, firmly headed away by Rohit Chand. And Natal will look to sprint forward with time almost up on the watch. Now well, there we go. As expected, Australia.